all right hello everyone uh, welcome to class 5 uh, so today we will continue from uh, where we left off in the last class so in the last class we were actually uh, we have properly defined what a tensor is we said any tensor t i j a second rank tensor right should uh, uh, transform so we defined a tensor as something that transforms right so i have t i prime uh, i j prime in the new coordinate system uh, and I have an A matrix that transforms uh, older vectors into uh, you know uh, uh, an older coordinate system into a newer coordinate system right. So, so A is a matrix it is a transformation matrix. So, the question we asked is how does a second rank uh, how does a tens uh, how does a property such as T i i j uh, trans uh, transform upon transformation of the coordinate system right. So, we said uh, you can do it as A i k A j l T uh, KL right. So, this is the old uh, tensor tensor or, or tensor in the older coordinate system this is the new tensor or tensor in the new coordinate system and this is the transformation law right. So, anything that transforms like this we called it a tensor uh, we called it a second rank tensor and we could actually extend it to higher ranks also. So, if I have 3 indices you know so, I call T i j k prime uh, or T i j k as a third rank tensor if it transforms using this transformation law. So, a i l a j uh, m a k n T i j sorry uh, T uh, l m n ok. So, this is how a third rank tensor will transform or if a quantity transforms as this as this equation right. So, then you call that quantity as a third rank tensor. Then we gave an example of one of the properties which is a third rank tensor. Uh, we said the piezoelectric coefficient right. So, which relates the applied stress stress I am going to talk about stress either in the later part of this course or the next uh, sorry uh, class or the next class. Uh, so, stress uh, trust me is a second rank tensor right. So, it is it is a uh, uh, it is not a property, but it is still a tensor ok. So, all properties are tensors, but all tensors are not properties. Uh, so, uh, so stress uh, so I apply stress on a material right. So, I, I sort of uh, uh, compress it let us say and by applying stress on the material I am generating charges on the material or I am actually polarizing the material right. So, we have studied what polarization is. Uh, so, by applying stress on the material I am generating a polarization P i or, or uh, sorry uh, let us uh, uh, hang on one second. So, here I am going to say this is x j k. So, by applying x j k I am applying uh, I am generating a polarization P i uh, and you know the constant that relates these two or the property that relates these two is d i j k ok. Now, d i j k is a third rank tensor and the property it actually uh, tells me is what is called the piezoelectric property. Piezo means you know stress in Greek I think uh, or pressure uh, something to do with mechanical stress ok uh, and you know electric. So, so it is it is a coupled property right. So, it is it is uh, combining the electric field or uh, the, the electric polarization is my output what whereas what I am uh, 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 inputting what the cause is stress right. So, so by stressing the material I am generating polarization ok. So, it is it is a cross coupled uh, electromechanical effect right. So, this is called piezoelectric property ok. So, then we said all right. So, let us anyway go to a fourth rank tensor and you know so. So, can there be properties of much higher ranks of course, we can also look at property of a fourth rank uh, property which is a fourth rank tensor and you know the uh, so, so, so we know that stress is uh, k i j k l ok. So, we know that stress is a second rank tensor and strain is also a second rank tensor. So, this stress and strain we are going to talk about in the later part of this class or in the next class uh, and stress and strain are related through some sort of elastic moduli right. Uh, so, if I apply stress and I get some strain. So, uh, so this uh, proportionality constant is uh, what is called a compliance vector. 
So, compliance time stress is nothing but strain. So, S is the compliance sorry compliance tensor. Similarly, if my cause is strain like I uh, sorry x k l and if my effect is stress right. So, I can I can do the experiment any which way right. So, I can I can pull it to a certain displacement I can I can do a tensile testing experiment by pulling my sample to a certain extent and I can fix the displacement to which it is pulled right. So, as a result what I am inducing in the sample is some force right. So, is uh, so no, is some stress right. So, the sample is being stressed right. So, stress is the effect there and strain is the cause ok. But I can do the opposite experiment where I can apply a constant force and let the sample expand right. So, so, so that is this experiment this is like applying voltage and measuring current or op, uh, other way we apply current and measure voltage right. So, I said in linear case it does not matter uh, right. So, resistance and uh, 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 conductance will be inverse of each other uh, in, in the form of a second rank tensor. So, uh, so similarly you know so, so all these fourth rank tensors also in a linear case it does not matter. But when you go to nonlinearity, that is when it really matters whether you are applying stress or whether you are applying strain ok. So, this is related as C i j k l and C is my stiffness tensor ok. So, now I was also complaining about uh, the mechanical engineers where they have two notations S i j k l and C i j k l and you know S is the stiffness sorry. Uh, Yes. So, S you should remember this there is no other way of you know explaining this uh, S is the stiffness and C is the sorry <laughs> I keep getting confused. C i j k l is the stiffness and S i j k l is the compliance ok. Although this has an S which correlates with stiffness this has a C which correlates with compliance you know. So, uh, I, I I mean I give up at this point of time I do not know what is the rational for this ok. Anyway, so, uh, so that is a fourth rank uh, tensor right. Now, let me uh, just derive a very small uh, you know uh, fact based on which we can go and look at other nonlinear properties. Now, the question is ok. So, I have two vectors x 1 or x i and x j ok and these two vectors can be electric field these two vectors can be polarization whatever, but these are vectors ok. So, I, I start with two vectors x i and x j I take a product of them product of x product of vectors right. So, x i x j right. So, x i x j is a quantity right. So, this is a new quantity that I have made by just taking product of two vectors ok. Now, I ask the question is x i x j right. So, x i uh, you know so if I write x i x j as some sort of it has two indices right. So, instead of writing x i and x j I am going to write as some sort of a, uh, a p i j ok. Now, x i x j p i j which is defined as x i times x j is some quantity. Now, the question is is p i j a tensor if so what is its rank ok. The way I am saying it the answer is obvious, but maybe let me not say that right. So, let me not write it as p i j yet uh, I am just going to ask the question what is x i x j right. Have already broken the suspense for you I am going to prove that this is a tensor what is x i x j is it a tensor if so what is its rank ok. So, these are the questions we are asking all right. So, if x i x j were a tensor it has to transform like a tensor right. So, then what am I how does something transform like a tensor for any sort of transformation I I say that you know so x i uh, you know there is a matrix that is my transformation matrix sorry ok. 
A i j. So, what does A i j do? A i j takes uh, you know me from the older uh, coordinate system to the newer coordinate system right. So, this is this is a transformation matrix right. So, x i goes to uh, sorry x j goes to x goes to x dash right takes x coordinate system to x dash coordinate system. right ok. So, now I am going to ask the question what is x i prime x j prime right. So, now x i prime x j prime is nothing but a i k x k right times a j l x l and that is nothing but a i k a j l x k x l right. Now, I am going to say x k x l is the quantity that I am interested in right. So, this is in the older coordinate system this is a quantity I am going to call it as p k l right and x i dash x j dash is in the newer coordinate system I am going to call it as p dash k l right. So, uh, sorry p dash i k rather the indices are need to be followed. So, p dash i k so, then what do I have? I have p dash i k is equal to a i k a j l right. So, from this equation p k l right or the quantity p k l transforms like a second rank. So, what did we say? If it transforms like a second rank tensor, it has to be a second rank tensor right. So, that is the definition of a second rank tensor. So, instead of saying it transforms like a second rank tensor, I could, I could have just said quantity p k l is a second rank tensor. Now, what is p k l? p k l is nothing but it is the product of two vectors x k x l ok. Similarly, yeah, so, uh, so product of vectors transforms as a second rank tensor ok. Now, you can also show that uh, x i x j x k will transform transform as a third rank tensor right. So, in other words uh, or you can also show that if I have a uh, first rank tensor which is a vector times a uh, uh, second rank tensor which is you know. So, I am going to write it as uh, some p j k right. So, this will transform like a third rank this all I mean. So, all these facts you can you can generally show right. So, I just showed product of two vectors transforms like a second rank tensor, but you know. So, these all can be easily shown ok ok. So, that is good. So, if I have uh, if I have something which is uh, I have an electric field in the i direction and I sort of multiply it with electric field in the k direction and I make up a quantity this this quantity E i E k uh, this I can treat it as a second rank tensor right with respect to electric field ok. So, with that let me go to what are called nonlinear problems. Let us look at some nonlinear properties, nonlinearities. So, what did we say about uh, you know? So, polarization. Let's talk about polarization, right? So, if polarization is my uh, effect, the cause is an electric field. We just said polarization P i 
is nothing but chi i j e j right. Now, this is just a linear approximation. Now, I can sort of you know uh, uh, I will I'll write a proper nonlinear form uh, very soon, but you know so let us let us uh, talk about a one dimensional problem right. So, that things become easier right. So, polarization in general is chi times e there is only one direction right. So, so e should be in that direction p should be in that direction right uh, plus some chi 2 times e square plus chi 3 times e cube and so on right. So, in general the effect the cause is e the effect is p, but you know p is a function of e right. So, it is not really something time c that is that is a linear approximation, but in general p is a function of e right. Now, this function of e can always be Taylor expanded into a polynomial right and that polynomial will have uh, you know the first order term second order uh, 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 sorry uh, uh, you know. So, it is a uh, uh, yeah so a second order term a third order term and so on and so forth ok. So, all these are called higher order terms they are not called higher order terms they are they are higher order terms. Uh, but they are all uh, they all contribute to your nonlinearities, right. So, if I look at polarization as a uh, versus electric field right. So, this polarization is no longer going to be a straight line, but this is going to be uh, some sort of you know nonlinear uh, curve right. So, polarization is going to be nonlinear P nonlinearly depends on E ok. So, any sort of nonlinearities to a first degree of approximation we will just keep on adding more and more of these terms right. So, more the higher order terms e square e cube e power 4 and so on and so forth ok. Now, let us come back to three dimensions ok. So, uh, you know so in a general tensorial form I am going to write P i as chi i j e j right. There can also be some 0 term right. So, some some sort of remnant or po spontaneous polarization in the material right. So, so that does not depend on the applied electric field ok. So, so 0th order first order second order and so on and so forth. Uh, so, P i is chi i j e j plus chi i j k I am going to write it as chi 2 i j k e j e k right. Now, e j e k as I said transforms like a second rank tensor. So, uh, plus chi i j k l this is a third rank sir this is a third order term times e j e k e l plus and so on right. So, this is a generic form of writing uh, a tensor uh, you know in the, uh, the higher uh, the nonlinear terms of a of a tensorial uh, equation of of one tensor which is related to another tensor, right? Uh, okay. So now the question is, let us you know, uh, even though I say nonlinearity, I am I am going to stop at second order, right? Uh, so one order more than the first order, right? So I am going to stop at second order, and uh, you know, if I if I look at this, right? So so I have E J E K. If I am just looking at the second order term. P i second order right. So, that is equal to E j E k times chi i j k right. E j E k is your applied electric field it is right. So, applied so you are applying both E j and E k right. So, E j times E k is a quantity that is also applied in some sense I am making that quantity up, but that is also applied and that is giving rise to some second order polarization ok in my material. Now, uh, so, so this is again cause this is the effect and what relates cause and effect is a nonlinear property ok. Now, what is the rank of this nonlinear property? Nonlinear property again is a tensor like all properties are tensors right. So, then the question is what is the rank of this nonlinear property? right. 
So, uh, I like I said E j E k transforms like a second rank tensor right P i is a first rank tensor or is a vector something that relates a vector to a second rank tensor should be third rank right. So, so the rank is of chi i j k is a third rank tensor. All right. Okay. So, now typically you know so, uh, so if I shine light on a material right. So, light you know is an electromagnetic wave if I shine a plane wave of light right. So, so I have an electric field in this light which is oscillating as E naught sin omega t right. So, this is the light that I shown on the material ok. It is oscillating at frequency omega and this omega is uh, you know about 10 power 15 hertz or you know the frequency of oscillation f by 2 pi uh, sorry 2 pi f is omega, but f is omega, but f is about 10 power 15 hertz in visible uh, light right. Uh, uh, you know so, so radio waves, microwaves, visible uh, you know radiation etcetera right. So, it is it's a big electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, but in visible light if I shine light visible light into my material f is uh, you know. So, so I am actually oscillating this electric field at 10 power 15 times per second right. So, 10 power 15 hertz right. Whereas, if I just shine radio waves I am oscillating my electric field at gigahertz which is about 10 power 9 uh, uh, you know. So, uh, oscillations per second ok uh, or if I am if I am just doing some electrical measurement. Uh, applying a megahertz electrical signal E equal to E naught sin omega t where omega is in megahertz uh, then you know so that is still an electromagnetic radiation, but oscillating at a very slow frequency that is megahertz ok. So, it is uh, uh, so, but all these are different spectra of electromagnetic radiation ok. So, now I shine uh, light uh, or uh, you know so in some sense it is just the electric field that is oscillating at such high frequency and I am going to look at what is the polarization generated in my material because of this electric field right. So, there is of course, a first order term which is dependent on the susceptibility right. So, susceptibility times E naught sin omega t ok and there is a second order term right. So, I am going to truncate this at second order which is chi 2 this is uh, uh, ok. So, so, since let me write it properly. So, E is just E naught sin omega t 0 0 E is a vector right. So, E 1 E 2 E 3. So, I am just applying E in one direction right. So, so the x direction. So, or you know so uh, one of the directions uh, direction number 1 right. So, E is just oscillating along this direction it is what is called polarized light right ok. So, uh, then what is the polarization I am generating? right. So, the polarization uh, uh, I am generating is chi uh, you know P i is chi i 1 E 1 E naught sin omega t plus chi i 1 1 E naught uh, this is chi 2 right. So, E naught sin omega t whole square. So, I am writing polarization up to the second order. Okay. All right. So, that is equal to chi i 1 E naught sin omega t. Let me just look at I mean I can generate P 1, P 2, P 3 all of them I can generate right. So, let me uh, I am generalizing it by writing an index i plus chi 2 i 1 1 E naught square. Now, what is sin square omega t? Sin square omega t is 1 minus cos 2 omega t divided by 2. Okay. So, that is nothing but chi i 1 E naught sin omega t plus chi i 1 1 E naught square by 2 chi 2 minus chi 2 E naught square by 2 cos 2 omega t right. All right. So, I am shining light at frequency omega. right I am shining light at frequency omega right 
So, my uh, so this is time and this is the electric field, electric field is varying at a frequency omega right. So, then I generate a polarization right. So, I am shining ok. So, I can write with a different color. So, then I generate a polarization right. So, now polarization you know. So, if I assume no phase difference I mean there will always be some phase difference I will talk about that is going to be something like this. So, this is a different scale right. So, do not worry about the exact magnitude etcetera. So, this is polarization you know. So, if it is a linear material polarization needs to be at the same frequency omega polarization should be at the frequency of the applied electric field right. So, for a linear material right, but for a non-linear material my polarization does not only have a component at frequency omega, but it also has a component at frequency 2 omega and that is given as you know. So, minus chi i 1 1 e naught by 2 e naught square by 2 cos 2 omega t right. So, this is the polarization. So, the pole so I have a polar if I if I sort of frequency filter my polarization I will get some polarization response at frequency omega. I will also get frequency uh, polarization response at uh, frequency 2 omega. Now, that is what is being non-linear non-linear means if I apply if my input or cause is at a frequency omega right my output or effect has frequencies omega 2 omega 3 omega and so on and so on, right. So, ok. So, we will truncate at 2 omega right. So, the others are much weaker effects right. So, if you increase the magnitude of the input magnitude of the input electric field that is when you can see the higher order effects right. So, much higher order effects and so on ok. So, this is what is meant by nonlinearity. ok. So, so p 2 omega has you know. So, I have a component of polarization at 2 omega uh, you know. So, so my electric field then uh, you know. So, how do I draw that my electric field is varying at omega this is E versus T my polarization then is varying at a frequency of 2 omega. Right. So, this is p versus t. So, this is p 2 omega just the 2 omega component ok. So, the in the polarization response I have something that is oscillating you know some polarization that is oscillating at frequency omega some polarization that is oscillating at frequency 2 omega and I have another term right. So, I have this term that is just static polarization right. See maybe I skipped a page here. Yeah. So, just static polarization or DC polarization which does not show any frequency response right that is also uh, that has a magnitude again I 1 1 uh, E naught square by 2 right. So, this is just the DC polarization ok. Now, if I look at polarization that is varying at 2 omega right. So, as minus chi I 1 1 you know e naught square by 2 cos 2 omega t right. This effect that I can shine light at uh, frequency omega whereas, I get the response at frequency 2 omega right. It is a non-linear response this is what is called second harmonic generation I am shining light at a frequency omega whereas, the material is responding to that light by generating its own polarization material generates polarization with light because light has electric field in it right. So, electric field generates polarization in the material, but this polarization is oscillating at double the frequency of my incident uh, electric way, uh, field right. So, electric field is oscillating this slowly polarization is oscillating faster right ok I can do this <laughs> I am so asynchronized to do the second order effect, but uh, you know. So, so if it is a first order effect polarization oscillates at the same 
frequency as the electric field. If it is a second order effect polarization oscillates faster and electric field oscillates slower right. So, so or uh, it is double the frequency ok. So, this effect the second order effect is what is called second harmonic generation. So, my uh, polarization inside or the dipole moments inside my material are oscillating at 2 omega and they emit a light again that I can detect which is at 2 omega right because this is these are like small dipoles which are oscillating. So, they emit light that I can detect and that light also has a frequency of 2 omega ok. So, that is second harmonic generation. So, I can send in light into these crystals that generate a second harmonic response and I can give out light. So, I can I can send in light at frequency omega through a material right that has some second harmonic response and I can get out light at frequency 2 omega ok. So, that is my second harmonic response right. Now, remember the second harmonic tensor chi i j k is a third rank tensor. and you know this is actually called the second harmonic response tensor right. So, chi i j k is large I have a large second harmonic generation chi i j k is small I have smaller second harmonic generation right. So, it is like any other property ok. So, but this is a third rank property ok. So, it is a second harmonic uh, generation right. Now, I also have a DC component P d c is chi i 1 1 e naught square by 2 which means you know. So, if I am shining light which is oscillating if I am if I am shining light right into my material I am actually I am just shining light right into my material which is you know. So, in this case it is a black box or you know I am drawing it in red color. So, it is a red box right. Now, this light can generate a polarization ok. So, uh, let us uh, let us talk about uh, you know. So, so what happens to a material when I uh, shine light on this material I am shining light at a frequency h omega h nu rather and my material you know. So, any material you know bit of solid uh, state devices and you know. So, uh, band structures right. So, so any material has if I am looking at the energy band diagram energy band diagram as a function of space right. So, I have a valence band I have a conduction band right. Uh, so, so I can excite uh, carriers from uh, you know the valence band to conduction band I create a hole in the valence band and I have a uh, an electron in the conduction band right. So, I can create this sort of what is called an exciton right. So, so by uh, by shining light I am generating electron hole pairs in a material, but ok. So, the band gap of the light uh, sorry the band gap of the material should be less than the uh, energy of the light that you are shining ok. So, then I can generate when E g is less than h nu ok. So, so I mean you may have studied about band gaps etcetera from other courses. So, I am just going to give that as a simple example ok. Now, then I am generating this electron hole pairs. Then if I have you know some sort of I have a material, but I have some sort of an inbuilt electric field in the material right. For example, people talk about what are called p n junctions I have a p type material I have an n type material right. So, and then I have an inbuilt electric field in near the junction right. So, there are going to be negative carriers here there are going to be sorry negative uh, uh, charges right. So, these are just bound charges there are going to be positive charges here and these are all depleted they do not have any free carriers it is just uh, uh, a bunch of positive charges and a bunch of negative charges as a result you have an electric field that goes from positive to negative right. So, there is there is some sort of an electric field that is being generated. Now, if I shine light on this p n junction which is above the band gap of this p n junction right shine light on a p n junction then 
by shining light I am creating electron hole pairs right. Now, I am creating electron hole pairs. So, there is an electron and a hole generated at the same location, but I am also on the top of that uh, imposing an electric field right. So, electrons move towards the positive side. So, electrons so electrons move here and holes move here right. So, I am not just generating electron hole pairs, I am generating electron hole pairs. but I am also separating them right. So, when I generate electron hole pairs and separate them right, I can use these electron hole pairs for some sort of a conduction right. So, I can create some sort of voltage or I can I can I can create some sort of a current right. If I just generate electron hole pairs if there is no p n junction no intrinsic electric field right. So, these electron hole pairs combine after a while. So, so they, they are not participating in generating current in the material right. So, they are generated they are excited particles they are generated and then they combine after a while ok. So, they are generated they combine they have to be separated this electron and hole that is created should not see each other right. So, they have to be separated once they are separated they generate current in the material and that is your photo current or uh, you know so, so that that is the so that is actually how your solar cells work. Right. So, shine light generate photovoltage or photo current depending on how you are doing the experiment. Okay. So, this is what is the conventional photovoltaic effect. Right. Now, let us come back to our material that show a non-linear response. On this material also I am shining light right my black box material I am shining light and this light you know so by virtue of its electric field is actually generating me a polarization and this polar DC polarization some static polarization which uh, is given as uh, chi uh, uh, i 1 1 or chi 2 i 1 1 times e naught square by 2 ok. So, if I uh, you know so it is a non-linear effect it is generating this DC polarization chi i 1 1 uh, e naught square by 2 and if this h nu is greater than the band gap that will also create electron hole pairs right and these electron hole pairs are can be polarized by this internal polarization right. So, internally I, I am generating some polarization. So, I am generating some electron hole pairs I will separate them because there is some sort of polarization in the material right are can be se are separated by P D C ok. So, as a result I can also get photovoltaic effect from just shining light on a single material I do not need uh, you know a p n junction right. On this single material I am shining light the light itself generates a polarization right. So, a DC polarization which will separate charges and I am also generating the charges which will be separated because there is already some inbuilt DC polarization which is coming because of light right. Such an effect right. So, where I do not need a p n junction there is already some inbuilt polarization because of the light that I am shining. Uh, right, but this happens only in certain materials right? we will see what sort of materials this happens later. This effect is what is called bulk photovoltaic effect you do not need a p n junction here. You are taking advantage of the non-linearity right this is a second order effect right. So, because I am squaring the chi times uh, e naught sin omega t whole square I am getting this DC term also when I am squaring that and this DC term is just used to separate out your electrons and holes and generate a current generate a photo current or a photovoltage right uh, photovoltage essentially. So, this is what is called bulk photovoltaic effect you can use bulk photovoltaic effect also as uh, you know some uh, uh, sort of batteries to create uh, to generate current ok. So, let me summarize with that uh, in this class. So, we have been looking at higher order tensors and uh, uh, you know so non-linear properties. So, first of all we said uh, you know you can expand uh, you know any uh, cause and effect as a Taylor series right. So, and every 
you know order of this Taylor series has a property associated with it. These are all non-linear properties. One of the examples is second harmonic generation, uh, right. So, I said uh, you know so if you shine light of sufficient intensity the higher orders are also excited the material will respond at 2 omega when you shine light at omega that is second harmonic response. But also the material has another response which where it generates just a static DC polarization, right. Now, because of the static DC polarization if you shine light above the band gap you can actually separate electron hole pairs and use this sort of materials as, uh, uh, as solar cells right. So, the materials of interest in this case are materials such as lithium niobate right, barium titanate, uh, lead uh, etcetera right. So, I will I will tell you why these materials are of some interest later on right, but, but these are the materials that, that have uh, uh, some significant bulk photovoltaic effect, okay. So, with that let me uh, finish for this class and I will see you again in the next class.